So the history of the Bonnie Blue Flag very interesting when a little piece of, uh, in 1810, a little piece of West Florida and Louisiana still owned by the Spanish under a Spanish military dictatorship out of Baton Rouge. Uh, civilians down there, the citizens didn't like that, they wanted to be part of the United States. So they'll have a revolution, some lady will put together that flag, the blue flag with a single star on it, and they will have what will end out to be a bloodless revolution. They march on Baton Rouge, it's a Spanish military dictator who's in his 70s, has no interest in any kind of revolution, he's more interested in paella and sangria back in Spain, so he just leaves, says you can have the place. And for several months in 1810 until October, it will be the Bonnie Blue flag that flies over the um, capital in Baton Rouge as the flag until they are accepted into the uh, United States and they will then start flying the Stars and Stripes. Well, another uh, song that uh, I think should have been featured in the movie Gods and Generals would be an old Scottish love song. Uh, I was reading a Confederate diary of a soldier who was at Fredericksburg and on December 10th wrote in his diary, as we were having our sing-along tonight, as we always do, he wrote, we kept going back and returning to a song called Annie Laurie. He says, you know, we knew we didn't put 80,000 men on one side of the river and 60,000 men on the other side of the river to have a cup of coffee, wave at each other and go home. And we knew a lot of us weren't going to go home that, uh, from this place. And So many of us had that girl back home, the wife, the fiancé, or even the daughters. But especially the wife and the fiancé, the girlfriend, who promised me true love. Promised them true love if they survived the war. And of course, that was a, a big if, and many of them didn't survive. Well... You have so much talk about the Irish in the Civil War, people forget about the Scots-Irish and the Scots. General Jackson was Scots-Irish descent, so was General Stewart of the Confederate Cavalry. Ulysses S. Grant was a Scots-Irish descent, so was William Tecumseh Sherman. But if you could imagine, perhaps a bunch of uh, Scots-Irish soldiers in the Confederate Army around a campfire that starts to sing a beautiful old Scottish love song about that girl back home who promised them true love. And then maybe the next campfire started joining along with them and then in the next, and the next, and in the next, and by the time this song was ended, maybe you had hundreds of thousands of Confederate soldiers all singing about that girl who promised me true love. This dates back to 1685. <laughs> Like the 